Hello everyone and welcome to the Independent Reporter's first YouTube video. First of all, I'd like to thank anyone taking the time to view this video. And now that I think about it, everyone watching this is watching this video. Kind of simple, yes. So I'd like to thank all of you. You guys help out my channel a lot. And let's let's get this channel going, even though it's just one crappy picture. You know what? I'll add more pictures this episode. But it's essentially one person talking with a crappy picture in the background. But as I said before... Hope you like it. So now, we're, today we're going to talk about something that is dominating the news stories. No, it's not something in Europe about terrorism. No, it's not the Middle East. And, and no, it's not the Rio Olympics or something with the Kardashians. No, it's something more obvious than that. The biggest reality TV show in the world, and that is the United States election. So today we're not going to talk so much about you know, which side's better, which side I believe is better, the policies, and all that stuff. That will be held for a different episode. Today we're just going to talk about how, as of today, July 27, 2016, how the field is matching up and how it's looking like, like who's going to win and how they can win. So I'm going to start off, by, off the bat by saying that most of these are my opinions, but they are backed up by Real Clear Politics. It's a site that I suggest you use. It doesn't really have anything opinionated on it. It just throws the polls that are collected over time. Now, these polls are, of course, opinionated. So you'll see varying discrepancies with the polls taken. But I'd also like to say that, you know, with candidates that are having 20% more unfavorables than favorable, sorry, 20 points, I should say, you know, things are going to be very varying. Like, it could come down to who's got better hair on a certain day. And you know Trump always wins that. So, it's you know, Trump's going to have different numbers. And, you know, Clinton might not lie for a day. And, you know, she could get extra votes. So, it's really who can do one good thing. And you know what? They lead that day. But, as I said, I'm doing this on the 27th of July. Now, this is after the Republican convention and halfway through the Democratic one. Um, but all these polls were taken before the Republican one, so they're going to be a little bit behind, and I'll talk about that now. So the important thing to remember is the polls that I'm going to tell you, they're all completely in favor of Clinton, and the reason for this is because Trump had something extremely beneficial to him, and that was knocking out Ted Cruz. And Clinton had something extremely detrimental to her, and that was the email scandal. Now, these aren't massive things. It's not going to destroy Clinton, but it's going to change the polling and so far, it's looking like some things based on um, Senate races and governor races in the South and in other areas, so like Nevada and Florida, importantly. It looks like the Republicans have a 2% surge so far. Now, 2%, again, it's not a lot, and I'm not saying it's a lot, but for these swing states that I'm going to talk about soon, it is a lot. And we're going to use a 2% swing and I'll mention this many times, um, for the Republicans. Now, this could change. Uh, the convention for the Democrats is still going on. It could flop right back. But as of now, it is the 27th, and the Democrats are on the defensive side of things. So, before we get into the actual polls, I'd like to point out a simple fact about the United States electoral system, and that's it's not who gets the most votes. It's who gets the most votes in state, and who gets the most states from those votes. And that's how... It has always worked for any of you not in the United States. Maybe it's different. Of course it's different. Now, the reason for this is basically to give states more power of voting and stuff like that. Now, it may not be democratic, but, you know, all this is a story for a different day. But it results in the fact that certain states will always stay. So, for example, New York, California will always be Democrat, and they're worth a lot. Whereas Texas will always be Republican, and it's also worth a lot. So... The essential thing of this whole electoral system is that you will have five, six swing states that are about 50-50 in population for voting for both sides, and they will decide the election, not not the big states, or at least not yet, because it seems that in terms of polling numbers, it's quite close between the big states that are not swing states. Like, if you take all the swing states out, the election will still be very close. Although, you could argue it goes a little bit to the Democrats, because so many people live in California, so many people live in New York. But again, that's that's a story for another day. So today we're going to talk about those swing states. Most notably, those are Florida, Ohio, North Carolina, Virginia, Michigan, Minnesota, Nevada. And I guess now you can throw in New Hampshire, but 
you know, New Hampshire doesn't matter much. It's worth a couple of votes. So we're going to go back to real clear politics and have a look at how things are doing for both sides. Okay, well, I kind of lied about the real clear politics thing. Now, I'm using all the data from it, but this is a site called 270 to win, and I highly recommend it as well. I'll put the link in the description, and it basically maps out things. Now, there's, I don't think there's much substantial to this, like no articles or opinions. This is just throwing things right on um, the electoral map. And what I've done is I've taken all the old polling data from Real Clear Politics from the 24th, the 17th, the 12th, all that stuff. And these are the averages, not a specific poll. And I've put mapped them on there. So any state within 1% of each other is considered a neutral state. And those right now are Nevada, where it's 100% tied. Florida, slightly in favor of Trump. And Ohio, slightly in favor of Clinton. So currently, those are swing states. And if you can see up at the top, I'll mark it out right here with my mouse. That is 53 points, well, delegates, that will decide the presidency. Now, as you might notice, they don't matter. Clinton currently right now, or better to say before a week ago, had enough states to win the election if the election were held that day. Now, of course, things will change in the future, but currently Clinton has the upper hand. Now, with that 2% surge that I was talking about, again, this came on through looking at the polling data of uh, Senate races in Nevada and Florida, which happened recently, I think one or two days ago. It shows that things aren't always going to be the same. And when you add those swings in, 2% again, you end up with a completely different number. So this is what you end up with. Again, Clinton still has the upper hand. And truth be told, that's how it is right now on the 27th. Clinton has the upper hand in the election. Now again, things could very much change, and I'm not going to get into the split electoral votes down, as you can see in the bottom right side of the map, because first of all, they don't matter too much, they're only a couple votes, and second of all, we don't have any data for that. But that aside, this is how things are currently going in the race, and Clinton, if the election were held today, it is likely she would get about 288 votes to Trump's 250. So again, tr Clinton right now in the lead. But the important thing to note here is that, you know, things are start to move. And these polls are not always accurate, as I've said before. Um, so if we were to ask, what would cause Trump to win? Now, again, another disclaimer. I'm not saying that Trump deserves, deserves to win. I'm not trying to give him extra, you know, glorification. I think I just made up a new word. Anyway, the whole point I'm trying to make here is that how easy things can go both ways. Now, as I said before, the swing states are very important. And if we look back at the polls, we'll see that there is a couple paths to win. So if we look at the first pass, it's the easiest path to get there. And that is winning Pennsylvania. And I'll go ahead and flip that right now. If you see that, if Donald Trump were to win Pennsylvania, Donald Trump would actually win the election. Very close, I might add. 270 to 268. Now, that just means essentially winning one state. And I, I fully do believe Trump will win Nevada, Florida, and Ohio. Just because Florida, the way it's going, like Florida already currently has a Donald Trump lead. Very small, albeit. But it is still showing consistently that he will lead there. So unless something happens, I can just, I honestly see Florida going to Trump. Same with Nevada because he's already had businesses established there. And there's generally a lot of Republicans there. But again, Nevada is a very odd state because of um, the amount of power it gets in terms of delegates as compared to how many people actually live in the state, even though it's only worth six. I'm, but in this situation, everything matters. You know, even getting New Hampshire here would matter quite a bit. But again, as I've said, this to me is a very realistic way of things turning out, again, except for Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is the one path to victory. So I'm not saying Trump will win realistically. It is just the thought. Now, currently, Trump is behind by anywhere between, well, according to the polls, he could be up or losing by 11%. Now, as I said before, it's a wide margin, but it is realistic to say 5% when those polls were taken, because if you average them out, that's what you get. Now, add the 2% surge, that's about a 3%. Now, Trump 
is going to be quite strong in places like Pennsylvania, which is normally a Democratic place. And they'd also be strong in places like Virginia, Pennsylvania, and other very, you know, uh, mid-Democrat but hard-working lifestyles, like the middle-class areas, places where, for example, if anyone knows about the primaries, where Marco Rubio was expected to be strong in. Because Trump, again, appeals to not the regular conservatives, it's more of a Democratic conservative. Now, I want to get this video finished up soon, but that is just the most, the probably easiest way to do it, or the simplest way, just winning one state. And as you can see from past elections, one state because it easily, easily go in many different directions. Now, another option would be, for example, him to win Michigan and um, North Carolina. Now, this isn't the most obvious one, if you think of, but it gives him a solid lead, and North Carolina and Michigan are theoretically the closest ones to being there. Now, Michigan, if you look on Real Clear Politics or a bunch of polling averages, it is quite heavily in favor of Clinton, about 5%. But if you look at the way the trends have been going, it's not like very unreliable polling. It's slowly been going towards Donald Trump. And the wide, uh, the larger average is because of the older polling. So theoretically, if Trump can pick up steam in Michigan, he could win Michigan. He's only three points behind on the last poll. Again, that is one poll, and it's really hard to base off that, but that is one situation. North Carolina, that is currently one of the two-point separations, so it could be tied right now as we speak. So, again, this is takes less effort, but you need to win both of them. And I'd like to finish off on one more ridiculous and interesting ways that this race could finish. And that last thing would be if Donald Trump were to win North Carolina, which is 100% possible, and win New Hampshire, which well, I'm not going to say it's 100% possible. I would think that winning Pennsylvania is just as likely, or winning Michigan and North Carolina, just as likely. But if something were, were to happen where he wins North, uh, New Hampshire and North Carolina and nothing else, it could be a 169 all tie. And that would be very, 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 very uh, problematic for the United States. Not so much for the actual outcome, because what happens is you'd have Congress deciding. I believe Congress or the Senate, one of those two. Um, they would go into a vote and they would decide. And, I mean, it's likely Donald Trump would win because of the Republican advantage in both sides. But that would, in a sense, undermine democracy and it would be a problem. And it, it will probably lead to a lot of people wondering why it happened that it was an even number that this kind of led on. Like, why is there an even number of states? And maybe I'll get into that one day, the stuff that's wrong with the electoral system in the United States, but I just thought it would be very interesting to point out that this race could very much end in a tie. But as for the future, what I think likely will happen is you will see this race come down to a couple, a handful of states. Um, as I said before, it will be the, all the swing states, but it is likely that this will come down to North Carolina, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, not so much New Hampshire, but it's still in there, and Michigan. Again, Ohio and Nevada and Florida are going to be like key ones, but it's likely that they're going to go to Trump because of the current pollings. Again, it would take a miracle for them not to go to Trump. Um, but that's pretty much how the situation goes. So watch those diff four different polls and see how things could turn out. And make up your own decision about what side you think is better. But for all the Clinton or Democratic supporters who think that Trump cannot win, he can. It's very simple. He just needs to pick up steam in Pennsylvania or North Carolina and Michigan, and he wins the election. And for all the Trump supporters thinking that, you know, Trump has got this in the bag, it's not going to be that that easy, and it's not looking like that right now. As I said before, Clinton does have the lead going back to earlier in the video when I showed you that she had a about 30-point lead. So both sides need to realize what's going on here, and it will be a very close race, potentially closer than any race we've seen in a long time, going all the way back to 2001, which not that long ago, but still. And you're going to see it's going to come down to, instead of it being 300 million Americans voting, on the presidency, or probably about 150, because the voters turn out it's not amazing. It's going to come down to pr likely about a million or so Americans deciding who will be the next president. So, anyway, I thought I'd like to share that with you, and 
please feel free to share this, these videos with all your friends, anyone who you think might be interested in this. Again, we're trying to have a kind of independent view on the whole situation, not so much independent of the, in the United States where, you know, a lot of people are saying they're Trump or Sanders voters, but someone who is not blinded by, you know, who pays them and stuff like that. And me being from outside of the United States, I'm able to be in these situations where I can evaluate them. And again, we would like to put out videos that are not biased. Now, that being said, they will have opinions in them. And some of the stuff is opinions, but these are opinions on what could happen, not dominated by what we believe and uh, all that stuff. And videos like this, we hope to have very clearly possibilities, but not opinions in them. But as I said before, I will come out with a video later on saying what I believe in, um, in terms of good policies and bad policies. Not so much what I support, but what are good and what are uh, bad for both candidates and both sides and allow people to make decisions based on that. So again, please like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. It helps us out tons. Again, first video, it'd be nice if we can get some views on it. But anyway, take care, guys, and try to have a very good, unbiased decision of who you're going to vote for and on politics in general. And see you next time.